Reverend Sean Ferguson for City on the Hill Ministries is coming to you live from a study. Um, I'm uh, going to be preaching a sermon uh, that's very dear to my heart. I've went through a lot of it today. And you know, all who live godly are going to suffer persecution. So I'm thankful that the Lord Jesus is with me. No matter what we go through, Christ is with us. And I'm thankful for that. He's a God at hand, saith the Lord, and not a God far off. But we're going to go ahead and we're going to get into the Word of God, and I pray that something I say or do will help you. That's the, the reason why I do my sermons online. I, I do it here uh, just so I can help somebody. Because I know if I myself am facing problems and issues, I know others are also. And all who live godly, like I said, will suffer persecution. The title of my sermon today is The Battle is Real, Spiritual Warfare. So we're going to go ahead and go in uh, chapter 15 of St. John. And we're going to start in verse 18. It said, If the world hates you, you know that it hated me before it hated you. This is Christ Jesus speaking. If you were of the world, the world would love his own. But because you are not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hateth you. That's why the world hates those who live for Christ. It's not you necessarily they're hating but they're hating Christ that lives in you. You are putting off the concerning the old man, and you're being conformed more into Christ's image. And that's the one that they hate. They hate the Christ that you represent. For we are all ambassadors of Christ. We are all uh, uh, we are the light of the world, a city that's set on a hill that cannot be hid. That's why we don't hide the light under a bushel. We don't hide it. We let the light of Jesus Christ shine forth into the dark world, and it exposes their darkness. Amen. It exposes who they are, and they see us. You can't hide a see, uh, uh, the light in darkness. You can't hide it. It'll shine forth, and they hate to see their deeds that they do made known openly before them. But let me tell you, because we are the light of the world, a city that's set on a hill, they cannot be hid. I remember when I was over in Israel and I was over by the, I was over by uh, Israel and I was over uh, uh, by the, by the uh, Sea of Galilee looking out over the sea, there was a city that shone on this hill. And those scriptures ran through my mind. You could see that city, no doubt, from miles away. <coughs> and that's how it should be. When someone sees you and I who are representing Christ, those who are born-again believers, we should let our light shine before men that they'll see our good works and glorify God. Not to glorify us, but to glorify God, to bring Jesus glory and we live in a world that hates Christ. We live in a world that will hate you because you live for Jesus Christ. I, I found that out a long time ago when I first got saved, April 16th, 1997. <clears throat> it said, if the world hates you, Jesus is telling the disciples, you know that it hated me before it hated you. If you were of the world, the world would love his own. Because you are not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world. Therefore, the world hateth you. We are to, to be a living representative of who Christ is down on this earth. And if you are living godly and living holy, let me tell you, the world will hate you. Because you put off the old man, you've been made and you've been born again of the Spirit of God. Those old things that you used to do, you don't want to do no more. Amen. You've been created in the image of God. You've been 
born again of the Spirit, amen, the old man, that old sinful lifestyle of drugs and alcohol, hey, it's done away with running around promiscuity, and the world does not like to see somebody that is different than them, amen, they want somebody that is that is living a, a, a sinful lifestyle that they can relate to. But because we represent Jesus Christ on this earth, they will hate you. The title of my sermon, The Battle is Real, Spiritual Warfare. Amen. And it says, remember the word, this is Jesus speaking, that I said unto you, the servant is no greater than his Lord. And if they persecuted me, they will also persecute you. If you have kept my saying, that they, they will keep yours also. Amen. <clears throat> the, we're going to be persecuted. All who live godly will suffer persecution. That's a given. Amen. Marvel not that the world hates you because it hated Christ before it hated you. And we are Christ's representative on this earth. Amen. And we want to live in a way that shines the gospel light of Jesus Christ out to this world. But the world is in darkness. And they don't want their deeds reproved. And they will not uh, uh, like you because you are not of the world. Those who have been born again in the Spirit. Amen. We are as Abraham. This world is not our home. We're looking for a city like Abraham. We're stra strangers and we're pilgrims here. We're looking for a city whose builder and maker is God. Hallelujah. We have been called out of this world. We're in the world, but we're not of the world. Amen. We are a separated people. Therefore, we are a peculiar people and a treasure in the eyes of God. It says, but all these things will they do for my name's sake, the persecution, because no not him that sent me. They don't know God. They're lost without God. And if I had not come and had spoken unto them, they would have had no sin, Christ has said. But now they have no cloak for their sin. They had no covering for their sin because Christ preached the truth. And no doubt you have witnessed the truth in your life. The way you live uh, will reprove the world and its evil deeds, and they will hate you for it. He that hateth me hateth my father also, Christ said. And have not done among if I had not have done among them the works which no man other no other man did, they had had no they had, had not had sin. But now have they both seen and both hated me and my father. Christ did many works among the Jews, many works among the uh the Pharisees and the scribes and the priests, and they hated Christ because he done the miracles. He's, he healed the blinded eyes. He casted out the devils. Amen. He, he healed the sick, the leprosy. Hey, he raised the dead. Hey, they, he did the works of the Messiah, but yet because of the hardness of their heart and the wickedness that, that they envied him and for jealousy and strife, they persecuted Christ, and they should have known. They sir, they read the scriptures. They knew the scriptures. They should have recognized their Messiah, but they did not. Now we're going to go into Second Corinthians ten, three and five. It says, "For though we walk in the flesh." We do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, carnal, they're not natural, in other words, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. What does that mean? The warfare that we're fighting every day, making no, uh, uh, let's not be blind to the reality we are in a spiritual battle today. All who live Christ-like are in spiritual battles. You have got a, a spiritual battle going around you. There's a warfare in the heavenlies. There's a warfare around you. The devil's wanting to trip you up, bust you up, mess you up, wanting you to fall for his uh, uh, devices. Well, we are not ignorant of the devil's devices. 
He's wanting to tempt you away from Christ and let you follow after some thing, some fling in the night or some sin. The Bible says the pleasures of sin is for a season. But the end thereof are the ways of death. Hey, it'll lead you to hell. Amen. And we're going to follow that straight and narrow way. We're going to listen to the voice of the Savior. The voice of the shepherd. We are his sheep. And we're going to follow closely by the master. And listen to him. And listen to the voice. Because the devil has always got other voices. There's people and voices trying to pull a Christian every which way. Hey, let me tell you, we must follow the way of truth. And Jesus Christ said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father except by me. So we must go God's way. We must follow and be an example to the flock, be an example and be an ambassador of Christ and representing well on this earth. Don't live in a way that will bring shame to your Lord and Savior. Those who are born again. So the mighty uh, the weapons of our warfare, we do not war after the flesh. For the warfare for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. What does that mean? The Holy Spirit will give you strength when you put on the whole armor of God and use the sword of the Spirit. Hey, let me tell you, you can fight the fight of faith and lay hold of eternal life. Hey, the Bible says, upon this rock I'll build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Christ had given us the victory through Him. We can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And we are more than a conqueror through Christ Jesus our Lord. There is a spiritual warfare. But thank God, God had gave us, us the victory. Jesus gives us victory. Amen. That we could go and tear down the stronghold of the devil. And destroy it. And bring it to ruin. Not in our own might. But by the power of the Holy Ghost. By the power of Christ's name. In Jesus' name the demons tremble. And have to flee. In Jesus' name the sickness is gone in Jesus name the dead is raised in Jesus name let me tell you there is no limit on the name and the power of Jesus Christ and the blood of Jesus Christ there is no limit and no power of the blood of Jesus Christ that cleanses from all sin it will give you strength to stand hey let me tell you this good old time way hey this old time way called holiness it will keep you it'll make you it'll it'll strengthen you and give you strength to stand it'll keep you we are sealed by the spirit of god till the day of redemption when the enemy comes in like a flood the spirit of the lord raises up a standard against him or a shield against him and let me tell you we can do all things through christ who strengthens me hey we can destroy this devil's stronghold that's on our family that's on your children that's on your loved ones. That's on the lost man and woman out there. The woman trying to sell her body for a quick fix. You can take this gospel light and shine it around her and tell them about the love of Jesus Christ. And that love will get a hold of their heart. The Spirit of God will draw them and destroy the powers of darkness and the stronghold that the devil has over their life. Why? It's the anointing that breaks the yoke. Hallelujah Hallelujah to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Hey, let me tell you, it says this, casting down imaginations and everything that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. The warfare begins in your mind. The devil, he's as a roaring lion. Seeking whom he may devour. And let me tell you, there is a battle being waged for your soul. There's a battle being waged every day. Hey, we may not see it, but I know the Bible says the angels of the Lord are camped around about them. That fear and love God. Hey, let 
me tell you how many times we don't know in one day that Jesus Christ has sent his angels hey those messengers those ministers to move the mountains out of our way the obstacles the devil has put uh, to make us trip and bust us up and, and make us fall away from God the, tra the traps and the snares hey the enemy meant what meant for harm for us God turned it around for our good he turned it around for the glory the trial you've been going through you stick true with God and he'll pull you through it and make you a soldier of the Lord Jesus Christ he will bring victory your way the Bible says we are made overcomers by the word of our testimony and that we love not our lives unto death the devil wants to steal kill and to destroy he's a thief he wants to steal kill and destroy but Jesus said I've come to give you life and life more abundantly let me tell you we are not going to settle anything less than victory in this spiritual battle hey we have got victory in Jesus name we've got victory in the blood of the lamb hallelujah and glory to God I said we've got victory no matter what you're going through today you are an overcomer that's why the devil wants to steal you and destroy your testimony he don't want you to testify about the goodness of God because you are made overcomer by the word of your testimony and by the blood of the lamb and that you love not your life unto death it says casting down imaginations and everything that exalts itself against the knowledge of God there's thoughts in your mind that you must repent of and rebuke it in the name of Jesus. The devil will try to bring thoughts in your mind and try to, you know, it's like, it's like this. I heard one man say, as a man of God, he says, you can't help what comes around. Hey, but you don't want to let it build a nest in your head. If it gets in your mind, it'll get to your heart. Hey, rebuke it in the name of Jesus Christ and go on for God. God. It says, and bringing into captivity every thought unto the obedience of Christ. The devil wants you to doubt God's word. The devil wants you to doubt God's blessings on your life. The devil wants you to doubt the promises of God or yea and amen. Hey, let me tell you, we're not going to give place to the devil and, the, and resist the devil, the Bible says, and he will flee from you. Hallelujah. Make no mistake, brothers and sisters, we're in a warfare. This thing is winding up. Soon and very soon, the shafar, the trump of God is going to sound, and the dead in Christ are going to rise first. And those who are alive and remain shall be caught up together to be with the Lord in the air. Hey, let me tell you, it's going to take place soon. And I want to be one that's found watching, that's ready. I don't want to be sleeping and slumbering when Christ comes. I want to be one that says, here I am, Lord. Come into my life and take me. I'm ready to go. The Bible says this. It says in Isaiah 54 and 17. No weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper. And every tongue that rises up against thee in judgment thou shalt condemn. There's a lot of backbiters, a lot of murmurers, a lot of people talking against God's people. You know, you've got to be careful. I had someone today at work that was starting trouble with me and saying things about me. The Bible says, touch not my anointed and do my prophets no harm. It's a scary thing to attack a man or woman of God. And if you're a Christian today, and you're murmuring and backbiting and complaining and running that mouth hey, against a man or woman of God or a brother and sister you are doing the work of the devil for the devil is a slanderer of the brethren hey and let me tell you you need
need to repent of that. If you are talking bad against your pastor, talking bad against the preacher, talking bad against your brother, your sister, you need to get that tongue under subjection of the Holy Ghost. Because no man can tame the tongue. It's an unruly evil set on the fires of hell itself. Hey, only the Holy Ghost can tame that tongue. Only the blood of Jesus Christ can get it under control. And we need to look to God to lead us and guide us, direct us into all truth and get that lying tongue under subjection to the Spirit. Hey, because if you're lying on your brethren, hey, the devil is a liar and the father of it. There is many people that's going to burst hell wide open because they don't get victory over their tongue. It'll lead you to hell. Amen. You can't talk like the world and cuss and try to go praise the Lord and worship God. Hey, it will not work. Hey, God will Jesus. The Bible says the Holy Ghost will not dwell in an unclean temple. No weapon formed against thee shall prosper. And every tongue that shall rise against thee in judgment, thou shalt condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and it is their righteousness is of me, saith the Lord. Hey, when they're attacking you and, uh, and trying to bust down your reputation, trying to destroy you and trying to uh, 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 tear you apart, so to speak, it's Christ in you that they hate. And it's Christ in you that they don't like. Hey, I say just keep shining the light of Jesus Christ. You pray for your enemies. Bless them to persecute you and those that despise you. Pray for them and love them like Jesus. In doing so, you'll reap coals of fire onto their head. Let me tell you, we are in a warfare tonight. And stand up and be accounted as a soldier of Jesus Christ and have a backbone to tell this world of the saving grace of Jesus Christ. Tell this world the hope that is in Jesus. And don't you be ashamed to, to, to talk about the goodness of God, the love of Jesus Christ, and witness the people. Jesus said, if you're ashamed of me, I'll be ashamed of you before my Father and his angels. We're going to go to Ephesians now. Chapter 6 and verse 10. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Don't you dare try to fight the devil on your own merit or on your own strength. Let me tell you, he's been around for millions of years probably. I don't know. Uh, it doesn't really say. Hey, he started out as Lucifer, the morning star. He started out as right, but he got his eyes on the throne of God. Hey, he protected the throne of God. He was over the music ministry of heaven, but yet he started to where he wanted to be on the throne. He thought he could do a better job than God. Envy and jealousy entered his heart and pride. He was the most anointed cherub, the most beautiful cherub, the most anointed, uh, 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 at one time, one of the most powerful created beings. I said created beings. He's not divine. The devil's not divine. He is only a created being. He is probably on the same field like Michael the archangel. He's an arch devil. At one time, he was an archangel, Lucifer. But he fell when he led rebellion against God, and he led one-third of the angels, and there was a war in heaven, and he was kicked out, and he became, the name of Lucifer became Satan, the deceiver. The destroyer. And he was kicked out of heaven. And now he wants to get God back by, by destroying people's lives. Why? Because they're made in the image of God. And he knows every soul he takes to hell breaks the heart of God. God has no pleasure in the death of the wicked. But the wicked would repent and turn away from their sins and turn back to God. For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever, that's anybody, 
that believeth in him should not perish, and that means go to hell, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but the world through him might be saved. Amen. And there's nobody that's went too far from the hands of the Savior. Those nail-scarred hands are reaching out in love and mercy and grace and wants to save you to the uttermost, wash away your sins and give you a new slate, make you born again of the Spirit of God and regenerate you. Hey, bring you uh, eternal life and write your name in the Lamb's Book of Life. He wants to give you a new outcome, creating you a new creation, a new creature in Christ. It says, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord, in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God, that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and against powers. These are demonic forces and rulers of darkness of this world and against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God that you may withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. Stand therefore, having your loins girt with the truth and having a breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, whereof that you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. We walk by faith and not by sight. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Amen. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. Hey, this way is a faith round. This spiritual warfare, we walk it by faith, knowing that as long as we got the whole armor of God on and we're fighting this fight of faith, that Christ Jesus will bring us victory over all the opponents of the opponents of darkness of this world, the opponents that live in the second heavens, hey, those demonic spirits that's trying to oppress and depress the men and women of God. That's why the joy of the Lord is your strength. The devil wants you to destroy your joy, make you anxious, depressed, anxiety, and worry. He wants to destroy you and make you doubt the promises of God and make you falter and fail and backslide on the Lord. But draw nigh to God and he'll draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hearts, uh, you sinners and, and you double-minded. I may not have said that just right, but you know what I meant. Above all, taking the shield of faith, whereof you should be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked, and take the helmet of salvation, and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. This is how we fight the devil with the Word of God. That's how Jesus Christ uh, beat the Satan in the, the wilderness uh, where he was being tempted of the devil of 40 nights and 40 days. He kept telling the devil, it is written, it is written, it is written. And he would quote the word of God to the devil, and he defeated the devil and the powers of darkness. And the devil had to flee. The Bible says, resist the devil, and he'll flee from you. It also says this, and this will be the closing of my scriptures. The battle is real. Spiritual warfare is the title of this sermon. It says, but what I do, this is 2 Corinthians 11 and 12. This is Paul speaking. But what I do, that will I do, that I may cut off the occasion from them which desire occasion, that wherein they glory, they may be found even as we. There's some that want to puff up themselves, puff up with pride. They're not living right. They're living sinful. And Paul says this about them. For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves as the apostles of Christ. And marvel not, for Satan himself is transformed 
as an angel of light. The devil ain't so dangerous. I mean, he's dangerous without Christ. But when you see him as a serpent, you recognize he's an enemy. When you see him as a serpent, you know who you're facing. But when he comes to you with a silver tongue and a beautiful appearance, because the devil ain't got a pitchfork and horns and red, by the way. That, that's a comedy the enemy, the devil brought out so people would make light of who he really is. But he's no light matter. It's a serious thing the devil is. Hey, he's destroyed countless of lights and took trillions of souls, no doubt, to hell. And he's most dangerous when he appears as an angel of light. Anything that goes contrary to the word of God, are you listening to me? Even if it appears as an angel of light and goes contrary to the word of God is not of God. It is of the devil. And he's there to deceive you. He's there to make you doubt God's word. And ultimately, he's wanting to damn your soul. If you're born again of the spirit, I don't believe the devil can possess you. But if he can get you to backslide and the Holy Spirit leave you, then he could possess you. But ultimately, he's wanting to damn your soul. So he comes as, as, as a great speaking angel of light that will deceive if you're not careful. He could deceive even the very elect if not careful. That's why you must be prayed up and walking in the Spirit. The Bible says, do not be a drunk with wine where is in excess, but be filled with the Spirit. Why? The Spirit of God will lead you and guide you into all truth. That's why it's so important for us to catch on fire. That Holy Ghost fire burning us and blazing us. Hey, that we should be baptized with the Holy Ghost and fire. Hallelujah. Hey, fire to burn out anything that's unlike Christ in our hearts and in our lives. Hey, and if there's anything that should be resurrected, I say, Lord, do it. Resurrect anything that's like you that's dead. Lord, and burn out anything that's not like you that's in my life. Burn it out by the power of the Holy Ghost fire. Burn it out and let me repent of it, Lord. Turn from it and turn all the way to God. Amen. He wants us to be sold out completely unto Christ. He wants us to make no provision for the flesh. Put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh. He wants us to deny ourselves daily. Take up our cross and follow Him. Why? Because there's a deceiver. There's one who's wanting to destroy your soul. His name is Satan. And he wants to come as an angel of light and tell you hey, something that sounds good, looks good, uh, would feel good, and would give into your flesh. Hey, let me tell you, husband, he'll send a woman hey, that got all the Jezebel spirit, but she'll come as a chaste woman, seeming pure, but she's full of wickedness and she's wanting to pull you away from your wife. Hey, she's wanting to get you to lie with her and commit sin and adultery and for the women and the men that's out there that's single let me tell you it is not okay especially if you are a child of God to commit fornication with these handsome men women that come by your way hey that want to tell you everything you ever wanted to hear and get you to give in and prostitute to yourself out what God has blessed you with and give up your purity for a fling in the far country. Let me tell you, the pleasures of sin is for a season, but the end thereof are the ways of death. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. The devil will bring people in your life to pull you away from God. Hey, people that look and appear godly, but they ain't. They're full of dead men's bones. They're full of wickedness. They're full of the devil. They've got ulterior motives to be in your life. Hey, they're wanting to steal, kill, and destroy. They've been sent by the devil. They may not even know it, but they're being used of the devil to destroy your life. That's why we must not be around those who are not of like faith. Date those that are outside of Christ. 
That's why even those that are in, that claim to be Christians, if they're trying to force you, ma'am, to have sex with them, hey, I'm going to be just blunt or perform oral sex on them or any sexual way, hey, that's not of God. That is not of God. That is of the devil. You need to leave that person alone and have nothing to do with them and mark them as a hypocrite. Mark them as a heretic and don't have nothing to do with them. If they're claiming to be saved and they're trying to force you to do things not according to God's word and disobey God. <coughs> the Bible says, no, you're not. You are not your own. You are the temple of the living God. Amen. The Bible says, no, you're not. You're not your own. You're the temple of the living God. We must present our bodies holy, a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is our reasonable service. That's the problem. There's too much fornication going on in the church today that people that are not of God and they're committing sin and causing Christians to backslide because they're not praying where they should be. They're not reading their Bible like they should be. And they're not attending church like they should be. And they're not close to God like they should be. And the devil sees your weakness and he uses it against you. And draws you out after the world. Draws you out to the far country. Amen? The devil wants to appear as an angel of light and deceive you and destroy your life. And then it says this, Therefore it is no great thing that as ministers also be transformed as ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. So the devil's got ministers out there that look like they are and sound like they are holy men. But when they tell you uh, to do things contrary to the word of God, they never preach against sin. They preach this prosperity gospel. Uh, they preach you that everything's all right. All you have to do is sow seed and give us $2,000. And God will give you fourfold the blessing so we can buy our big uh, airplane jet liners in another mansion. Hey, let me tell you, they are not of God, the Joel Osteens, the Benny Hens, the Derophical Dollars. Hey, the Jesse Duplantis, they are not of God. They are of Satan who make merchandise out of God's people. There I said it. And there's many more that I haven't mentioned. Don't marvel that they can appear as angels of light. Don't marvel that the devil can appear as an angel of light. Don't marvel that his ministers can be his ministers of light. People are being deceived every day. Hey, and leaving God, leaving the way of holiness and going after a new way. That is not another way. It's a way that will lead you to hell. We must stick by the good book. Holiness without no man will see the Lord. You mentioned holiness. People are more afraid of holiness than they are sinfulness. What's wrong with living a holy lifestyle and being clean and pure and having an honest heart before God? What's wrong with denying the world? What's wrong with living for Jesus? Nothing. And in Christ you can do these things. But when you let down on your prayers, when you let down on your devotions, when you let down on reading God's word, when you let down on going to church, when you let down the standards, when you give in a little bit, this Bible says a little fox is full of eye. I'm sorry to say, God is not coming back for a lame, diseased, sick harlot of a church. That has prostituted out the glory of God a long time ago for this new way, this entertaining way. You go to churches, it's more like a rock concert than it is a church. They got the lights flashing. They got the dancers out. There's nothing wrong with dancing in the spirit. There's nothing wrong with singing godly songs. But they went after the world. They went after the way of Balaam. 
They prostituted the goodness of God out and sold it as nothing. Thank God for the remnant that's holding on to Christ, that is preaching the infallible word of God, that is living holy and got the Christ Jesus in their heart and is making no provision for the flesh that's sold out to this world. And they're a, they were once a slave to sin, but now they're a slave for Jesus Christ. And they've got no will of their own, but what the Father's will is for their life, they want to do it. They deny themselves daily and they take up the cross and follow Christ. This is Reverend Sean Ferguson for City on the Hill Ministries. I pray that something I said can help you. The battle is real. Spiritual warfare. The devil's wanting to trip you up, bust you up, mess you up, call you away from God and destroy your life. Dear Heavenly Father, we're coming to you in prayer. I pray there's something I've said or did, Lord, that's helped somebody. Lord, I myself have suffered persecution today. I myself have went through a battle today. Hell has came against me, and I came victorious through you, Lord. And I pray, Lord, those who are listening to the sound of my voice, God, they may be going through trials. They may be fighting battles. They may feel like they're in a lion's den. They may feel like they're in a fiery furnace. But, Lord Jesus... You are our salvation. You are our deliverer. You are the one we trust in to bring us forth through every trial. And we ask you, Jesus, Lord, to give them strength to stand. And when they've done all to stand, to stand, Lord. I pray that they would uh, get a hold of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, I pray that they would be realize they can do all things through Christ who strengthens them, Lord. And we ask it in Jesus' name we pray. I pray that you would uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel, City on the Hill Ministries, Reverend Sean Ferguson. God bless you. Jesus loves you. And so do I. If you have any prayer requests, send me a messenger. I'll do my very best to reach the throne of God. I love you all today. God bless you.